Hi everybody, it's Danielle with Inspire Me to, to DIY. I almost screwed that up. And it's Saturday. Today we are gonna make the cutest little spring birdhouses. Um, I just, I'm really, I know I'm rushing the season, but I really want spring to be here quickly. And I'm sure the people up north feel the absolute same way. So I have posted some stuff on the, the Facebook page beforehand with the materials. And what we're going to do is I have two different kinds here, two different kinds of birdhouses. This one I painted and did the dark wax on already, and I'll show you that. But we're going to paint this one, and while it's drying, we're going to do this one because you don't want to sit there and watch paint dry. Or do you? I don't know. <laughs> so um, we're going to cover them with napkins, and the reason I am painting them first is because you want a really light color, even though this is light wood, you want um, white to go on first so your colors of your napkin will pop. I am going to, I had all different kinds that I posted on Facebook, all different kinds of napkins, because I couldn't decide. But what I did decide on, let me pull them all over here, was these really cute sunflower ones. Can you see it with the glare? I love these, they're three ply, so we have to take the plies apart. Um, I also had these, aren't those sweet? I love the butterflies on there. I have ones with violets, and then I have, I don't even know what these are. Maybe mums, chrysanthemums, peonies? Maybe they're peonies. Yep, they're peonies, it says so on the back. I suppose if I read. One thing, one pack that I bought earlier, I guess it was this year, it was on sale at um, Home Goods was these ones for the 4th of July. Aren't they, aren't they cute? I'm thinking about cutting out the banners and then putting them on different things. That would look really cute like a, across the birdhouse also or maybe over here on the side. I love that. So we're going to go with the sunflower ones and I have already taken apart some of the, the papers, the pages, the napkins, whatever. And since they're three ply, I started this one because you don't want to see me cry on live video. Because you can. <laughs> this is three ply, and you need to take all three pieces apart. So there's this piece, and then you see there's still one back there. Then there's, you gotta be kind of careful you don't shred it. That piece, and then you have what you need for your um, project. You don't want to leave these layers on because when you go to glue it, they'll come apart and then it'll flake off and nobody wants to see that. I don't save these for anything. I mean, you could use them for tissue, I guess, but I, I keep a lot of things, but I don't keep things like that. So then this is my one ply and see how it's almost the same on the front and back, not quite but it's as thin as you can possibly get it. And then I cut them, I cut the little flowers out. So I cut each, each square out, all four of them. And this is what I have. Of course, I only have three of these, so I must have used one along the way. I have these, and I did a little trimming ahead of time on, on my other uh, birdhouse, so you can, you can see why. But let's get, let's get to painting, huh? I'm going to use Apple Barrel. Uh, I have white and I have Snow White. I have put them side by side and I really don't see a difference. So this is white. Try not to get it all over your thumb. All right. Oh, you know what? Huh, there is a reason for this now. Wipe paint off your thumb. Genius. All right, now I gotta remember that my white one has my paint because in my blue one, I'm gonna put my Mod Podge and it looks like white paint, so I'm gonna try to keep those straight. Who knows? There might be a, um, a big faux pas right here on live video. Okay. The brushes that I'm using, I'm blind as a bat. The brushes that I'm using is, um, basically for acrylic or watercolor. And these are acrylic paints. I would not use oil brush paint or oil brush 
oil paint brushes. Wow. For this because those brushes are pretty expensive. And that's like the last thing. You don't want to ruin your big expensive brushes. The more you use a paintbrush, you know, the more it wears out. So even your most expensive paintbrushes are gonna wear out. I have done oils before. Um, they're really hard. First of all, it, the best part is, is it doesn't dry right away. So you can move them around and, and blend and fix colors that way, but it's, it's really hard to get things just right. I think because I try to paint so exact as to what I'm looking at, and I gotta realize, instead of painting exact, I should paint it how I, how I want it to look, which is usually exact. So <laughs> I'm, I'm too picky with the oils, and then I'm always um, disappointed. So watercolors, it dries real fast and it is what it is. When you're done, you can't fix it. And I kind of like, it sounds weird, but I kind of like that. See, I just painted the one side. So you get all my ring lights here with these glasses on, sorry about that. Okay. Acrylics on the other hand is kind of, to me, is like an in-between oils and water. I like them because they're way more inexpensive to use than oil. I think watercolor is the, the least expensive because all you do is add water to your paints and then you can let them dry out again until the next time when you add more water, which is kind of awesome. We're growling under our breath over here, so I'm just wondering if we're going to start B-A-R-K-ing. I can't say the word, because then we will. But yeah, for some reason, he's really guarding this door over here. Okay. I like to paint all in one direction, uh, usually the direction of the wood. I don't think it really matters in this case. Um, I do go crossways to get my lines straight as much as possible. And I did mess that up. Oh well. And then I'm going again with the grain. We are going to the Pasco County Fair today. It, I don't know when it started, but I think it's, it's going on till Monday or so. So that's what we're doing today. Oh, I got a little hair on the on the roof. You see it? I can maybe get that off with a little sandpaper. What do I do with my sanding block? There it is. See if I can. Oh yeah, it comes right off. Nice thing about acrylics is they dry really fast, but I don't think it's going to dry enough um, for this project while I'm on camera. So that's why I painted the other one first. I got both of these birdhouses at Michael's. They were $5.49 each. Oh, why did I do that? So um, I got them both. I got two different ones because I'm not sure. I wanted to see how each one looked. And I think on this one here, I might use a different napkin. Get my paint around and then go down with the grain of the wood. I might use the, um, I don't know, chrysanthemums maybe, or I keep calling them chrysanthemums, peonies. I might use the peonies on this one. We'll see. I should get napkins with actual birds on them. So then it could look like, like a bird is sitting right there. It is, um, I'm not sure what, what your temperature is, but right now it's in the 80s and it goes down in the 60s at night. So that's very comfortable because the humidity is only like 50%, which for here is glorious. Absolutely love it. It's once the, um, 
humidity starts amping up that it's not so pleasant. Okay, let's see if I can get in the point here. So I work in the schools, I think I mentioned that before, and spring break is almost here. And you can tell it by the kids, because oh my goodness, they are, they're feeling spring fever. <laughs> so I, that's in what, two weeks is our spring break. I don't know when it is up north. Probably about the same time. I think it usually is. And um, not doing, not going anywhere this year. My daughter's coming down for a visit, and we're just going to hang out at the beach and not do a whole lot. It'll be, it'll be wonderful. I'm really looking forward to just doing nothing for a while. <laughs> Okay, almost done painting this one already. The wax that I use is a, it's called dark wax. It's from Kills, K-I-L-Z. And it, you're supposed to use the clear wax first and then go over it with the dark wax for, um, to make it look like it's got more dimension. But I like just using the dark wax because I love how it makes raw wood look. And this is raw wood, it's not treated with anything. Trying not to do the little perch here, because I want to do that in my dark wax. All right, almost done. And I, you don't really need a lot of coats. You just need it to be white, so when you do your napkin, it pops. Pops. You know what I mean. The napkin pops, the color on the napkin. Okay. What do you think? Not a whole lot to it. I will have to sand off some paint over here. Oh well. Now I'm going to get this paint and put it totally out of the way because I know I will mix my paint and my um, Mod Podge. Mod Podge looks an awful lot like white paint. And what it is... It's a mixture, like half and half glue and water, but it's got other things in it um, for fixatives, fix, fixatives, yeah, to seal your wood and to take care of it a little better. Um, you can use it pretty much on any surface, but for Mod Podge, I'm going to use a foam brush. It's just, it goes on easier, and you kind of have to be careful with the napkins because they are only one ply now, and they tear quite easily. All right, put that out of the way. Here is my dark wax. It's from Kills. And Walmart used to carry this, and that's where I got this one. But they don't carry it anymore, so you have to go on Amazon to get it. But I have had this container well over a year, and it's hardly used. So I don't know if you can see that at all. They're up in the light. It's hardly used. You use such a small amount on a paper towel or a soft rag, and then you wipe it on your wood. This is what mine looks like. See, I did the little perch, and I did underneath here, and I did the top. I love this little round one. Isn't it cute? That's going to look really cute with the sunflowers on it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with mine yet. I think I'm going to put one like up on a pedestal, like the pedestals I made last week, maybe on one of those wooden pedestals, and then the other one can be down below. I think that will look so cute. And maybe a little fake bird or something sitting next to it. I, I think that'll be really cute. All right, I'm going to look at my flower. And it's, you're gonna have to like push it up underneath, whew, underneath the, the roof here. So I might need something to poke that in there. I use maybe the ed edge of my scissors. Oh, that's going to look so cute. I like it. All right. 
brush. Let's get my glue and water on. You want to put it on your wood first. I don't know if I can get it up underneath there. Best part of it is don't worry about getting it on like on my um, stained wood here because it will dry clear. Unlike paint. <laughs> and I'm going to put a big healthy portion on here because I really want my flowers to stick. And one nice thing about this is, and it's, it's if you're very, very, very careful, you can put your flowers on and if that's not right, you can reposition it maybe once. But you have to, you have to be extremely careful because it will tear. All right, let's see. If I can get it up underneath the roof first, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, kind of smooth it out. If there's a couple of wrinkles in there and you can smooth it out fairly easily, go ahead and do that. If not, you can pretty much push those wrinkles down and kind of smoosh them together and they will lay flat. It's, yeah, it's just your picture will be a little distorted and I kind of did that on one of my flowers. See, I thought I had a whole bunch of glue on, but I got a whole area here that's I missed. Hi, Carl. What are you doing? Hmm? Come here. What you doing? You need something? All right. Oh, you just want to make one? You can make one. Make a make a dog house. Ah, oh, tore it. All right. Well, good. So at least you can see that it, what to do if it tears. All right. I tore it right here. So I'm going to just try to smoosh that back in together. Maybe put another piece of yellow over the top of that. See if I can get it up underneath there. Nice. And then I need to get more glue over here because I didn't make it wide enough. Roll it over onto there. Now I have quite a few wrinkles in there. I don't know if you can see that, like right through there. Can you see the wrinkles? What do you think? So I think I'll be able to smooth them down with a coat of Mod Podge on the top. So let's try that. I didn't get that shoved up in there very good. And you know, once the whole thing dries, you can take an X-Acto knife and trim the edges, which I probably will need to do. Let's see. Put a coat over the top. That way it will smooth the edges down. No, I'm not getting up right now, Carl. Sorry. You should have thought of that before we started. Okay, yeah, but that tear I have, it's pretty good size. That's okay. Only God makes perfect things, right? All right. Hmm. Okay, so I have a big old hole. See right there? Oh, it's easy to see now. I am going to piece in a yellow part. I'm gonna do it over here on this one just to kind of fill in so it doesn't look like a big white piece just sitting there. Okay, let's see, I'm just cutting a piece of yellow and I'm gonna set that right on top, maybe. Huh. Get, okay, there. Oh, wow, that filled in really well. Okay, let me put another thing of glue on the top so you can see. Once it dries, you will not be able to tell. Hmm. I like it. What do you think? So you can't really, it's hard to tell with it all wet, but you cannot tell where the uh, hole was. Actually, it was like right there. 
so when it dries you won't see it. Let's go, now you can leave it just like this and maybe put it along the front and just leave it, but I kinda wanna go around that, the whole edge, so let's try that. And you can lay flowers on top of flowers. It will just look like um, flowers in a garden. They don't all stand side by side. Oh, my garage door just went up. I think my husband's home. Saturday mornings here are super busy. Between um, blog, my writing my blog and newsletter, we there's grocery shopping and you know pet store shopping and all of the the fun stuff. But we find that if we get it done Saturday morning, I know probably what the whole rest of the world out there all doing it at once. But then we have the rest of the day to just kind of chill out and relax. Okay, so this one, I think it's going to go a little better. All right, I'm going to lay my Mod Podge over top. And you can see I just put a huge healthy amount on. Now this is the matte. There's so many versions of Mod Podge. They have the uh, gloss, they have an outside uh, formula, one that's just inside, they have a waterproof. I mean, they have all different, for depending on what you're gonna use it on, there's pretty much a formula for anything. And when, when I was younger, we didn't use Mod Podge, we just used equal parts of glue and water, which works really good, but it doesn't have all those extra formulas like waterproof and all that. All right. Let's see if I can wipe off some of my globs. Okay. All right, kind of going around a little. Oh, I that's turning out really cute. I like that a lot. Let me put, I cut off a, a little flower bud because there's a, like a white spot right there. So I'm just gonna put it in there. And I have a lot of Mod Podge on there already, so I'm just gonna stick this on there. Perfect. And put a little on top. So it fills up that hole. It's really wet with the Mod Podge. But can you see why we want to paint it white first? Especially if you're not gonna go all the way around and you're only gonna use like part of it. This is really cute. Okay. Honey, can you let him in the kitchen? He's been bugging me. Okay. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the front yet. I think I might just put it over the top and then cut the hole so it um, looks more uniform. Let me see. Uh, yeah. Ah, get back here. Let me put my Mod Podge on first. I think I'm going to cut a hole and then like push the edges around this hole to kind of fill it in or cover it, go, go around the edge. I'll show you what I mean here. I'm just going to fill in all the parts that are white, glue them all in. Okay. It's kind of hard to get up underneath that, that rough line. All right, this should be the last piece I'm putting. Oh, well, maybe there might I might need to do one more. Let's see. Put it along the bottom edge. See if I can smooth it up as as much as possible. It's going to be hard with that wooden perch, but I think if I tear it, yeah, tear it around the the little pole. All right, now since it, where it went over these flowers here, I'm gonna have to put just a little bit more in there. You know, it's pretty wet already, but I wanna make sure it sticks down completely. Amazon has tons of, you know what if I just edge of this, has tons of um, 
different napkins. Just really cute ones. I think this works better. And um, a couple of these, I think the, the peony and the ones with the violets on it, I got on Amazon. This one, I love that little beehive on there. So I got those on Amazon, but the rest of them, I, I go searching when I'm at one of the home stores, like Home Goods or At Home, any of those. I always look in the napkins, see what they have. Okay. I wondered why that was sinking in, but that's where the whole of the birdhouse is. All right. Now see where it's kind of kind of sunk in right here. I'm just gonna poke a hole in the center as much as possible. There we go. And then just try to wrap it around the inside. Oof, maybe. Maybe not. Looks like it's uh, trying to stick to my finger. Let me see if I can do it this way. Ooh, maybe not. She wet. There we go. Part of it wet. And as soon as it dries and I can trim it. Let's see, get in there. There it goes, it was folded up. All right, let's see if I can, see how it's like going around the edges in there? So I can kind of coat the whole thing. You see there's some spots in there where it tore. But it's pretty much covered. All right, now I just have a little bit of this left and I think, I don't know if I can put another flower in there or what. Let me see what I have here with this piece. I think maybe one flower will fit. I'm gonna cut it a little bigger. Hmm. Let's see. Oh yeah, oh, perfect, perfect. All right, let's get the Mod Podge in there because I can see some spots where I don't have it. Okay. Good thing this stuff dries clear because I have it everywhere. Huh? Oh, that's, oh, this worked better, didn't it? That looks great. All right, I gotta tear it around a little bit around this perch. And again, I'll, I will um, trim that once it dries. All right, now to put the coat over the top. Okay. Almost, almost done and what? 28 minutes, not bad. Let's see. I am getting so much spring stuff out. And I don't know if it's because of, you know, the way God, God made us or what, but in the spring, I just want to clean my house, deep clean my house and get all of the the cold and the winter and leftover Christmas because you know we still have, like I have those red flowers back there, that's leftover Christmas. Get all of that packed up and put away. Start fresh, have the windows open, spring stuff. And I don't know if God made us that way because it's all new beginnings. I have this little flower left over, this little bud. I'm gonna stick in that white spot right there. So if God made us that because everything feels fresh and new in the spring or, or why, but I always want to deep clean and get all of the winter out of the house. Okay. Boy, I found a lot of ways to use these, the two plies of the napkin. 
Wow. Aw, look at this. Once it dries, it'll be clear and it'll look super cute. I'm glad I did the wax first because I did not want to get that on the paper. I don't think it would come off as well. Like, um, it's better to get it on the wood. Things are popping up here a little bit. After it dries, if you have bubbles, you can um, just slice them and glue them back in so they lay flat. But I think, oh, guys, I think this is going to be so cute on a pedestal and maybe a little bird on there. I'm going to let this one dry and let's just talk about this one. Probably can't do, I'm peeling, probably can't do um, napkins on it yet. No, it's still wet. But, you know, even something like that, it's just a little bit of a design, but if you put that just across the back, oh, a little bit of lavender. Let me just pull one out so I can see. Hmm, maybe. There we go. I'm not going to separate the layers because <laughs> it's really hard and I don't want to do it on camera, but I do want to just see what it's going to look like. Well, if I fold it this way, oh, look at that. That will look really cute. If you go back to some of my older videos, um, like last spring, we did a flower pot and a picture frame, and I bet I could, um, I think I used this for the picture frame and this for the flower pot, so if I could even do this lavender and make a match. Wouldn't the birdhouse next to a flower pot be adorable? That would be really cute. All right, I, when this dries, I think I'm gonna do something like that, so. Um, check back on Facebook often. I'd appreciate it. So, uh, and I'll post pictures of what this little guy looks like. I, I might, I might paint or I might put a, um, oh, that's right, Brenda. You have the frame that we made. Oh, that's awesome. I would love to see a picture of that and with your granddaughter in it. How sweet. Oh, I love that. Um, this this birdhouse here, I might paint the roof or I might even put moss on it. You see the sphagnum moss that they have or even the, the fake green moss. That might look really cute on here, especially if you put a little bird on the um, perch there. So check back and you can see that about the shirt I'm wearing. This is uh, part of my fear not period. The period is actually important. Um, the Lord talks about how he holds us in his, in his hand and that we should be anxious for nothing because everything that happens in this life, he, he already knows. He knows it's going to happen. He knows how to protect us from it. We just need to pray about it. And so with everything that's going on right now in the world, and all the anxiousness and the fear that people have. I mean, I've even had people tell me I needed to go and get all my money out of the bank because the banks were going to crash. I mean, just crazy stuff. Hopefully that's crazy stuff. Having a grip on what's going on and keeping it in control and keeping your cool is so important right now because people that are not Christians or even people that are Christians and are going through a really rough time with anxiety, you are the light of this world. They should see the light of Jesus through you. So this t-shirt, fear not, period, from Isaiah. I have, had, I have worn this frequently and just walking past people, they're like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What do you mean fear not? How can you not fear when all this stuff is going on? And it gives me a little opportunity to talk about my Lord and Savior. And I I love it. It's a conversation starter. Um, I also have talked to people that have the same uh, 
feeling about it. It's like, you know what, we do. We need, we need to be controlled and we need to be a light in the world. So if you're interested in buying this shirt, this is not a shameless plug, but if this is if this is something you're interested in, I have it in long sleeve. Also, I have it in tank top. You know, hot flash season, I wear the tank top a lot. And I have um, hoodie. So if you're interested, comes in three colors, go ahead and, and check it out on inspiremefabulous.com. And I will see you next Saturday. I am so looking forward to it. I have got the best project, and it's super simple, and you're going to love it. So I will see you next Saturday, and have a great week. Thank you, Brenda. Keep those prayers a-coming. The world needs it. Love you. Bye.